everybody! Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And we are going to be painting some big minis today. We are. Oh. Uh, some demonic big Some <laughs> demonic big minis, yes, yeah. for sure. Because um, so it's the season to be demonic, apparently. Is it? That's what I've heard. I didn't know. Oh, oh thank you for telling me. Leonie was I, telling I gotta me get earlier. on that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely get on it. <laughs> is it because of Valentine's Day? Coming yeah. Out? Is that, yeah. Yep. Yes, tis the makes season. Makes sense now. I St. Valentine know. was the largest demon. <laughs> and when I say largest, I mean, like, physically. physically oh, just, just out of the enormity. Yeah. Um, I got nothing. Really. <laughs> Hi to everybody in the chat. Uh, hi, Sumki. <laughs> hi, Josh. Uh, hi, Josh again. Because he's just doing yeah, there's dual, just everyone's dual Josh. platforming it. Yeah, there. We, we just decided earlier. Facebook and, yeah. Right before the show. Uh, Every, everybody is Josh. Everyone's Potter. Josh. Yeah. Nice. Hi, Josh, everybody. <laughs> hi, Mike. Hi, Roger. Hi, James. Just in case you guys aren't Josh Potter tonight. Just in, I mean, just in case, but I feel like that's low chance. They're, yeah. they're all just Josh Potter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think we'll go with Definitely. that. Definitely. Um, exactly. I'm just wondering if I should use this. I don't know that it's going to be. Oh, the quite giant one. The giant I just one noticed that Leona fits. had that out there. Leona, you're always prepared for us. But we'll see how Ooh, it goes. I don't know yeah. if that we'll just hold on. Fits. But they do have a large base, so even if yeah, it doesn't, yeah, you can it's easy to around. hold the larger base. So your mini is from a different place than my mini. Yes, it is. Completely. Mine's from the seventh layer of hell. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, mine is uh, the Baphomet Mini. I'm trying to. There we go. I'll put it in front of my pale face. Um, the Baphomet Mini from. He does stand from, out really well. He does, doesn't he? Uh, Baphomet Mini from Gale Force Nine, from their Dungeons and Dragons range, and awesome. yours is. And mine is from Wiz Kids, and I'll try to pronounce his name, Goristro. Goristro. Yeah, he's. Um, Sounds like a superhero. A little bit, um, and. He's just a furry little dude. I know you were thinking about doing him like kind of fiery lava kind of thing, but yeah. you could also do him like the beast. I could, or I was thinking, actually his face made me think of Ludo from Labyrinth, which is why I thought the rust The rust color, nice. I was like, oh man, he does remind me of that. Um, but I'm kind of, I don't know, I want to know if the technique works. What Dave's talking about is earlier, I was seeing all of this texture, all of this fur, and I was like, you know what would be interesting and cool if maybe I could paint down kind of lava-ish colors and then dry brush black over top of it to make sure he, to make sure, to make it look like he's uh, kind of like made from like coal Sh and Shadow lava. and flame. Yeah, shadow and flame. Very Balrog-y is the term I used. Yep. Um, I don't know if that'll work, but I'm gonna test it out on a little test patch and uh, it'll probably be his sad little booty that I've been making fun of the entire time before the show because he has none. He's just, just so sad. Poor guy. Maybe he's okay with that. He needs to do squats. He needs to balance <laughs> out. He's gonna, he, he's just so unbalanced. Excellent. Poor. That's good. Poor yeah. Garistro. Cool. Okay, oh. so should we jump into? Hey, are we going to talk about? Yes. Um, let me just be in the camera. Let me be in the way for a second. So uh, uh. Leona's going <laughs> to. From across, you'll see him very briefly. There's Leona. Adjusting the cameras overhead. There we go. You're in both shots at once. <laughs> That's impressive. I like that Gretchen's mini is dual wielding claws. <laughs> that's it is just dual never going to leave. But that's okay. Yep, they're a little bit easier because they're attached. A little bit. <laughs> Excellent. So, yes, uh, so we're also going to say, so we said hi to Mike, uh, hi to Sean. Uh, we're going to say hey to the Facebook user. Um, Leona will let you know how you can. Let Facebook access or restream access Facebook, something like that, so that we can see um, see your name there. Or if we can't work that out, um, just pop your name in front of each of your comments. That yep. Would be or cool. just pop on over to the um, Facebook live stream, just not oh, yeah. the one from the group, and then we can uh, see your name. Oh, okay. So yes, thank you, folks. Uh, it's all technical, technical difficulties. To me. <laughs> <laughs> There in we terms go. of the camera, but 
Now you got to see my cool purple <laughs> sweatshirt. <laughs> yep. What you don't know is that Leona is always styling. <laughs> I try. He is. He so is. yeah, we're painting up some uh, D and D and D monsters tonight. Yep. Gonna make it happen, Dave. How are you gonna paint yours? I talked about my yeah, experiment. Yeah, I'm. I'm going with like a fairly traditional um, sort of red demonic kind of look. Uh, I think he's got some fantastic uh, musculature and some texture on the muscles there. And there's also some great um, sort of scarring. So I want to try and pull that out. Uh, so I'm going to do um, start with a brown and work up to a um, kind of a bright red, the blood red from um, the game color range from Vallejo. Uh, and then probably mix in some um, either bone white or some ivory to start getting that scarring going on, get some nice highlights. And I think we're going to take, we're we taking two weeks with these minis? We are. So if I experiment and the experiment's a bust, then I can start over. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if it works, then I get two, two different shows to perfect it. Excellent. Excellent. That sounds like a plan. That's a good really reason good for doing plan. it that way. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of dry brushing because of all that great texture. Um, and I suspect at some point I'm going to be working some um, P3 coal black into it. Um, so it's a dark, very dark uh, greenish blue, which I think will work nicely against the, the bright red. Pop it in for some shading um, on the muscles and possibly some of that for uh, a little bit of dry brushing on the fur. It's got quite a bit of fur there as well. But thankfully that brown is showing up nicely on the um, on the skin there already. Looking very cool. But uh, yeah. Ooh. Hello to David Moffat. Hey it's David. Chat. Hey Byron. Yes, we've all been uh, having a bit of fun over the last two days. I expect uh, learning about the GameStop shares. <laughs> oh my Excitement gosh, and enthusiasm. I just learned all about that today. <laughs> I was yep. like, what yeah, is I this? Yeah, I just learned about it today. What's going on? It's really funny and great and yep. terrible and funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, uh, there's been a group of, uh, <laughs> what, the last thing I'll say about it in the, in the show is that there's been a group of my friends who have been going through and uh, talking about what their share portfolios include. Yeah. One of my friends was like, uh, yes, I, I have several thousand shares in Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another one of mine said, oh, no, I got rid of all my Blockbuster share and, and I only have shares in the White Star shipping line. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, they're, everybody's up to date now. That's their, awesome. With their portfolios. But definitely fun. Um, okay, Josh says, is P3 coal black one of your favorite colors? I think I've seen you use it before. <laughs> once or twice. Once or twice, Josh. Um, it is a, actually a, a favorite color of mine. Um, one of the other colors from the P3 range that I'm a big fan of is uh, Sanguine Red, um, which is... Oh. Yeah, yeah, Sanguine Red is really cool. Um, I love the Rin Flesh, which is a very pale flesh. And I love the um, Idrian Flesh, which is more of a um, sort of a deeper, uh, slightly bit of an orange tinge to it, but um, sort of a deeper flesh color, which is uh, really nice. It's great, great paint. But uh, yeah, people can also have a guess at what color I'm using right now. Get this base brown. What do you think it might be, Gretchen? I have no idea. I Top guess. Definitely something that's not anything you normally use whatsoever at all. <laughs> I think you just decided to wing it. Charred brown, maybe? Charred brown? Charred brown? Charred, Charred brown? brown. Charred. Is it a little bit? Yeah. Yes. You are I all... got it. <laughs> You're all winners. It is charred brown. Oh, it's a good, reliable go. color. It is. I can feel very comfortable with it. The uh, the way I'm going to switch it up today, though, is that for my the next dry brush color, 
This color that I don't use very often is gory red. But it is a dark red, so it's, it's almost cavalry brown, it's almost burnt red. But it's neither of those two, so my results will be slightly different. Slightly different, ever so different. Just only slightly, though. Yeah. But it should be fine. Cool. What do we got? Uh, Dave Pablo says, uh, holy giant angry cow. Yeah! They've both got a bit of an angry cow vibe. A little bit. Going on, which is good. So I did some research. Yep. And Ooh. Becky Alexander said, hi, kids. Hope you both are well having fun. Oh, it's Becky. And James Smith joins us as well. Oh, Thanks cool. For Excellent. Watching, guys. Very cool. Great to have you with us. Hooray. But, uh, yep, what else have we got? Um, I love that you, you've a. Do you actually type those in, Leona, or do you have you programmed it to occasionally throw in that little fact? You may be wondering why Dave I sometimes licks his brush. <laughs> I programmed it. I thought it was kind of funny. It's yeah. definitely funny. It is right? kind of funny. I think Byron also thinks it's funny there. Um, uh, Vallejo's Hull Red is a contender. David Moffat, you are correct. Hull Red is also a nice one. Josh Potter says, and Ali Payne is oak brown. That's a good color. It's a little less red than I like for my, ba my base reds. But uh, it is a good one. Hello, Colleen Lacey. Hello, Colleen. Cool. The boys, boys are, are watching, watching a bit before bed. Before bed. Aw, hey, Etienne. Hey, Bennett. Aww. Excellent. Now we're... All right. So, so do you want to talk a little looks bit? looks like it was painted by Monet. <laughs> yeah, do you want to show the camera a little bit? What you've um, been doing? So here's my current experiment. Um, I am going... I have this little blob on his shoulder and it's just a bunch of little strokes of uh, orange and yellow and red. <laughs> Hello, <Whoa>. Etienne. <laughs> um, and I'm kind of very loosely doing all of those brush strokes to get a kind of flamey um, kind of like, I, I kind of want to look to look a little bit like lava showing through. Yep. Um, so very loose, very kind of painterly st strokes is what I would describe yeah, it yeah. as. Uh, and then I'm letting it dry a little bit, and then I'm going to go back on top, and I am going to try to very lightly uh, stipple and dry brush black, and hopefully I will have enough contrast and enough like of those gradients of warm tones to be able to look like um, shadowy brimstone demon. Yep. Um, we'll find out <laughs> together. <Hooray. laughs> well, I think um, the way that you've got it at the moment, it, mm -hmm. it's almost like somebody you've, you've lifted, you just, you just pulled a chunk of lava, like crusty, sure. like black, crust yeah, off there and revealed the lava underneath. It looks great. Yeah. So. It looks great and painful at the same time. <laughs> um, Very cool. I like I like figuring out what uh, classic art techniques do on miniatures because it always <laughs> surprises me. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it's just interesting. I think um, that's great. So we'll find out. Indeed. That's cool. I think um, this guy's just got so much muscly flesh all over him. <laughs> yeah. So come along for come get to the moment. Also, welcome to Seth Cross. Thanks for joining. Hey, Seth. And also Gory on yep, Twitch. Corey. Hello. Hello. And uh, and Sean. And Sean. Uh, Sean would go with dark gray, a dark gray dry brush rather than Oh, the, that's a good idea because then I could build up that contrast. Yeah. 
I'm also gonna do a tiny little dollop of the shimmer just to see what that looks like underneath. Of course you are. <laughs> of course you are gonna do a tiny I dollop of shimmer. Done, I haven't done any sparkle anything for quite a few episodes. Do you want all the options? Yeah, and I, I feel like if I'm experimenting, <laughs> then... Then it's okay? Then it's okay, and also, I feel like I need to write this down if I'm experimenting. Oh. Mythbusters just came into my head like, that's not an experiment. <laughs> There's no writing anything down. Um, build that contrast and compare it. Yeah, that's true. Um, Just excuse me for a second. <laughs> I accidentally pulled my headphone jack. <laughs> and so with me being... I'm not functionally deaf, but it's probably not far from it. There we go. Okay, okay let's let that dry up a little bit. See if that does anything interesting. <laughs> David Moffat says he needs to see more shimmer. All the shimmer, always. Rainbow horns? Maybe? Rainbow horns would be really funny. <laughs> um, could he imagine this guy though? Like look at his face. Could he <laughs> imagine him all brimstone and fire and then just rainbow horns? Rainbow horns. <laughs> it would be amazing. <laughs> James is still working on his ship. Oh cool, excellent. Now painting the weapons for the ship. Oh, and some key thought Dave was <laughs> trying to steal paints. <laughs> all right, so no, the ship a... doesn't look bad. There's a barrier in between us. I'm gonna put the shimmer on more of this and try it. Cause it doesn't, it actually just looks kind of glossy since the colors aren't dark enough to really bring out the shift colors. Right. Which gives it a nice kind of wet effect, which I think will look cool. We're, we're playing with it. We're gonna, yeah, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for joining. Our goal in doing it later was so that people could watch us. More people could tune in live. For those of you joining uh, us live, let us know what you're painting. Yep. What are you working on? Are you painting something right now? That would be cool. You don't have to be, but... Uh, Always nice. I finally, finally posted a picture in the group of some minis that I've finished up this week. I've been threatening to do it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> finally did it, right before the show. So Very happy to get those guys done. There's some Death Shroud Terminators for my Death Guard army. Showing off a bit on the on the stream. <laughs> Ooh, Seth's playing with a 3D printer. What's your 3D printing? What type of 3D printer? Or no, like know. what's what's he 3D printing? Is 3D oh, printing? Oh, what's he 3D printing? What, what's what's the final result going to be? Yeah. All the things. Everything's gonna be printed. Ooh, guys, I have a question for the chat. Um what is everyone's favorite dinosaur minis? Cause I want to get some. <laughs> you need to get some? Uh, well, so I was talking at, at my other job, I was talking um, and uh, surprise in nerdy environments, other nerds tend to be there. Um, and uh, a coworker suggested that I run a homebrew um, game for Jurassic Park, since I love it so much. Uh, and have people trying to survive the island. And I'm pretty sure there's homebrews that have been made before that. But I, <laughs> I had never like thought of that idea before, like put two and two together in my noggin about no. it. And I was like, that is actually a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now, now I want to do it. Now I want to, I want to do a homebrew Jurassic Park game. Um, I don't know if I want to do classic Jurassic Park and have people 
who are, you know, like scientists, um, interns, workers who would have been on the island and left for the evacuation during the first film. Or if I want to do a Jurassic World kind of thing where they're uh, at Jurassic World and you have a, a larger grouping of people to choose characters for. Okay. Uh, but I definitely want dinosaur minis, so... <laughs> there are, um, if you wanted to do it so you can get some... Um, what do you call it? <sighs> Commercially available uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. Like the... Um, Jurassic World or Jurassic Park vehicles. I could. You could do like a 164th scale, which is like matchbox scale. Yeah. Or you could do, I think they're, they're like around 124th scale, the larger ones, larger cars. So, so the, a Jeep would be about, let me get my hands on the screen. There we go. Yeah, the Jeep would be about that long. <laughs> I, I just, like, this was just pitched to me by my coworker <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> um, so I haven't thought any further than, oh my gosh, yes, I definitely want to do this, and that would be the perfect thing for me to GM. Yep. yep. Uh, <laughs> would dinosaur minis be better if they had feathers? So here's my thought on feathers and dinosaurs. One, really awesome, really cool. Um, <laughs> that's two, <laughs> but that's okay. But in context to Jurassic Park, I'm okay with them not having feathers, and here's why. Dinosaurs from Jurassic Park are not meant to be accurate dinosaurs. They're meant to be recreations made bigger and better to gather more people's interest. Um, right. And they touch on that in some of the films very, very lightly. Um, but in the actual, like, if you pay attention to how the dinosaurs change every film, uh, you actually get primitive feathering on the velociraptors in Jurassic Park 3, and those are the velociraptors that have had the least genetic um, mutations, kind of. They've okay. been left on the island to breed, basically, on their own. So it's really interesting that, like, when science moves away and nature takes its course, the DNA kind of starts fixing itself, giving them those primitive feathers. Okay. And then the dinosaurs that you see... Uh, in the newer films are actually more rounder. Like the, the, and that's probably just the people in charge of CGI making them more rounded and not actually as in depth as, as I like to think it is. Not actually them growing to be but, rounded. Um, but there's a history of animals that, uh, uh, there's a, a thing uh, when you domesticate an animal, any species, um, they tend to become rounder in shape and more friendly looking. Just look at cows. Well, that's true. Particularly cows, angry cows. And it's happening, it's actually currently happening with foxes over in England. Okay. Um, and so my thing is that it's very coincidental that they look a little rounder and chubbier in the new Jurassic World movies because they're actually being bred to be, um, they were trying to make the Velociraptors less, uh, less angry, less aggressive. Okay. So I thought that was really cool. Even though they probably didn't mean for it to be cool, it was. Right. Um, so yeah, that's my thing with feathers and dinosaurs. They're awesome, <laughs> they're really cool. Uh, in any other context, yes, in Jurassic Park, I'm okay with them not having feathers. Okay. Though I think in the newer, the newer series, it's something they could start looking into. Because right. it, it would make sense in continuity. Okay, cool. Um, I have a lot of Jurassic Park ideas, thoughts, and yeah. opinions. <laughs> Just quickly, um, I saw that Byron said that he was uh, painting painting his lips with some greasy chicken. Ooh. Uh, Seth is uh, doing some underwater bases for some marrows. Uh, Gory says, uh, Knolls of Velociraptors are pretty good, two in a pack. Best bang for the buck is the dollar store dinosaurs. <laughs> yep. Which I could do, or I could get official Jurassic Park dinosaurs, but... Yep. <laughs> Sean says, uh, Weird's Maliosaurus Rex. Uh, Pug Friend on Twitch says, uh, Reaper has great velociraptors. Uh, and Seth says, Dave, I have an any cubic photon. That's, that's a 3D printer, apparently. <laughs> nah, sorry. <laughs> I know that, yeah, that's a 3D printer. That's cool. Very good. Uh, and Dave suggests, uh, why not both? I'm guessing that's... Feathered and unfeathered. All of dinosaurs. them is just what's as necessary. As many as possible. 
But he also says uh, regress a few dinosaurs. I just think it would be really fun to have a session, and I think it would be really fun to see whatever friends I can coerce, bribe, into playing this game with me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd be really interested to see how they would choose their character. Like, who would choose, like, the scientist or the intern or, you know, the janitor. Right. Like, there's a lot of interesting... And I feel like there's a really fun way that you could... Um, every one of those kind of people that could have gotten left behind on the island. Right. Um, different skill sets that would be really cool to have them have. Like, a janitor is going to have access to everywhere. They're going to have all no. the pin codes, right? And a scientist is going to have sciency knowledge. Um, unless they're like what I do in a lab, which is I do... I, I, like, I play a part, but I'm not doing the science. Right. So that would also be really funny. And, and I think that a janitor on... Like, who has decided, yes, I'm going to move to this island in the middle of the Pacific <laughs> to be a janitor on a dinosaur world, <laughs> essentially, is, um, is going to have a backstory. Oh, definitely. Like, what brought them there? And then, I mean, the intern... I've been dying for Jurassic Park to let someone be an intern stuck on the island. Because <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. That's totally what um, you, would, you would do. Somebody who was, like, super knowledge, uh, like super excited and They were so excited, and it, it counted towards their college credits, and they were right. just like... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it could be good. For and sure. then they just get stuck there. Um, and then you have, if you go with something more coherent to the Jurassic world, they have Camp Cretaceous now, which just dropped a new season, and then you could have camp counselors even. Right. So I think it'd just be interesting. It would be. There's so be. many options for dinosaurs. <laughs> there are. It's good to join that uh, Josh Potter saying uh, Ralpatha Legacy has a nice Tyrannosaur and Triceratops. Um, so he likes the Reap ones and then the WizKids ones as well. A uh, slight difference, difference in scales, pun, is naturally interesting. Uh, some key says, those cars cost a lot. They aren't Jeep. <laughs> yes. Mm. Thumbs up for that. Um, Byron suggests uh, Schleich Toys, um, which you can get at uh, places like Michael's and AC Moore, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. My daughter has an insanely large collection of horses. AC Moore. Hmm? Rip AC Moore. It doesn't they exist. Are, they aren't all gone, are they? I, oh. You're right. Maybe they aren't I, all gone. I had shares in them. Just kidding. Did you um, have shares in them? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> uh, chubby dinos. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, um, so just so you know, uh, Jason James has the question for you, Dave. Okay. Oh, the which question is it? Hey Dave, oh, what Dave. Are you doing okay. to your mini? Excellent. Okay, uh, Jason, um, doing, doing too many, putting uh, too much paint on the brush to be dry brushing. Just curious. Um, it really is, um, yeah, I'm not completely dry brushing. It's probably more over brushing. So I'm not taking all of the paint off the brush, or at least I wasn't for the, certainly for the brown and the, um, and the dark red uh, layers. So you can see that how it's um, starting to bring out the texture and put down the, the color on the the mini there, but now that I'm moving to the lighter color, the to the bright red, uh, the blood red, I am going to be doing uh, sort of just pull this. Oh, sorry, I, I can, I, I can. Oh, there we go. All good. Uh, so yeah, just maybe. Okay. We'll get there in a minute. But yeah, so. Um, for that, I'm, I am going to be doing some dry brushing on that to get those highlights there. So brushing off um, a lot of the paint onto uh, just a paper towel I've got at the side here. But the uh, yeah, the previous two layers, it was um, much more of an overbrush. So doing it the same way as you would dry brushing, but just not taking as much paint off the, the brush before you apply it. Um, you could do it, you could just do dry brushing, uh, but you probably want to do two or three layers. So really I'm just sort of speeding up the process here. Um, and there won't be as uh, quite as subtle a transition, but that's um, okay. I'm okay with that. I actually like how this is turning out. Yeah? You're looking good? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's very subtle. I'll probably, I think I put a touch too much black, but I think what I'm gonna do is go over on everywhere where he's kind of like hunched, like on his, on his shoulders, on his, uh, 
on his back muscles here, everywhere that's kind of elevated. Okay. And kind of have it look like the, uh, it's peeking through. So, it looks like I just destroyed everything, but up close it actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> um, I'd probably go over this again and, and re, uh, make it a little bit lighter, because I liked it before I added more black. But, right. actually, kind of doesn't look awful. What, um, what you might be able to do in certain areas is, uh, rather than stippling or dry brushing back over, mm -hmm. actually, that angle is looking really good. Yeah, it just, just enough to have it kind of come through and yep. uh, look. And if you, like, you can see all of the gradients in person. Yeah. Um, on that, you can't quite see the gradients as well, but with your actual eyeballs, you can see the gradients. But uh, perhaps for some of the larger, flatter areas, mm -hmm. you might, rather than stippling or dry brushing on, just paint in little um, chunks of black that you've dried. Yeah, that's a really cool good idea. Armor. So, and, and that I think that'll help sell the idea on the fur as well. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes that's what, what you need to do when you're messing around with a new approach, is just um, be very obvious in one area and it can be end up being less obvious in another area, but because it, you sort of sold it in one part, it, it can work across the whole piece. So. But yeah, I think that's gonna look cool. We have a question from Twitch. Oh, okay. Paint brush question, often difficult to find a brush specifically for dry brushing. Is there a specific design that works best for this technique? Um, I like to use the brushes I've killed. <laughs> that sounds really um. Dead brushes. Um, the ones that have been beaten up and can't be used for anything else, I'll just, it, like, depending on what shape I want, sometimes I'll uh, cut the top off to square it. Right. And sometimes I just leave it as is. Uh, as long as they're, like, stiff bristled and kind of a little frayed and... Yeah, I um, I use quite a few different shapes of brushes uh, for dry brushing. So for my larger dry brushing, I use um, ones that are shaped like this. So uh, this is my all-time favorite dry brush for large minis. Uh, this is a um, tank brush, Citadel tank brush. They haven't made these for probably 10 years. Um, I haven't used this one for 10 years, probably only used this one for about four years three or four years. But um, you can see it's uh, has like a circular tip. Um, it's very, very sturdy. I think these are like hog's hair bristles. Um, but it's it's rounded at the top there. It's not cut flat, flat across there. So that sh I, I really like that shape for, um, for a lot of reasons. You can get, you can dry brush in a lot of different directions, not just back and forth, but you can move it around. So when you're painting, uh, dry brushing a large textured surface, you can get a lot of coverage out of that. So I like that one. Uh, this one is the um, the Citadel, uh, let me get onto, there we go. Citadel um, Large Shade Brush. So this one I think usually has a um, kind of it comes with a, an edge like that, sort of that flat edge across it. But um, again, these are natural hair bristles, so I think they're pretty sure they're hog's hair. Uh, so I, I've probably had this one about four or five years as well. And um, it's worn down, the, ed the bristles on the edge. So you can see that it's rounded kind of this way and this way. Um, but I do like this one. And uh, these ones here are the um, the Army Painter uh, Wargamer Vehicle t and Terrain Brushes. You can't quite see that. Sorry. No, that's just a bit too bright. Flaring out a bit. But um, yeah, so these ones are Wargamer Vehicle Terrain ones. These are synthetic bristles, which is why you can give them a lot more, quite a bit more punishment than the um, natural hair bristles. And uh, they don't wear down as quickly. Um, I think uh, sometimes you can just get a, I do like this sort of a slightly softer effect that you can get with the natural hair bristles for dry brushing. But I'd probably, for ones that are on the market at the moment, I'd grab like one each of those two. 
They sit it on large shade brush in the Army Painter vehicle terrain brush. That would definitely be my go-to's when these run out. And when I say they've run out, they stopped making, as I said, they stopped making them 10 years ago. So occasionally I can find them or friends will say, hey, look what I found. And I'd be like, it's mine. A lot of um, people in the chat are suggesting makeup brushes. Which um, is so funny to yep, me. I, yeah, it's is kind of funny. I, I haven't used makeup brushes for, um, for dry brushing at all. Uh, but I think from a... Um, sort of if you're on a, on a budget, I think it's the Elf. The Elf ones are very elf cheap. Um, are, are cheap. I actually find the concept funny for a different reason, and that's because I've, I use paint brushes. For applying uh, makeup. Instead of makeup. <laughs> Me too. Um, well, because the handles are often longer. Um, so right. So, like, okay. paintbrushes has a full, and my hands shake often. Um, so, having the longer uh, handle really helps. Okay. <laughs> but e.l.f. is uh, pretty cheap. They're like $3, $6 a, a brush. Yep. But yeah, I know that a lot of people have, uh, have definitely tried them, and I'm sure a lot of people in the um, in the chat have tried them. Dave Moffat saying, never underestimate the power of the makeup brush. And George Potter saying, blush brushes, cheap ones from CVS or Walgreens. Byron uses mainly flat brushes, so that's more like um, the style here, the, um, the ones from Army Painter. And uh, there we go. And yeah, Byron's saying white synthetic hair, so that's what uh, what these ones start out as. How's that? That red starting to look pretty good. Got, got a little bit of a yeah. legend vibe. A little yeah. bit of legend vibe, yeah. Looking good. So I think I'm going to uh, actually just continue working on the the skin tonight. And I can do the like the fur and the horns and the the weapon next week. That's going to allow me to to get in and start doing some um, some brush highlights on it as well, because it does have that the texture you can see on the on the musculature there, and those cool scars across the leg. I can really start to um, bring those up with some uh, regular layering, highlighting. That'll be fun. Be quite good. Yeah, I gave these a black primer, uh, yep. prime because since they're monsters, I was like, I feel like they should have a dark undertone <laughs> <laughs> to them. Yep. <laughs> like you yep. can put light colors on them, but I feel like they should still have deep shadows. <laughs> well, I think the um, one of the other things from the from a, I guess from a show point of view as well, we've talked about. How we do we do use washes, but um, because they can take a while to dry, um, it's it's not great for the timing of the show. Yeah. Uh, so, with this this model's got so much texture, every surface has a has a texture on it. It's perfect for either dry brushing or washing. So, if you had to prime them white, I think it would it would have been a lot of contrast paints and washes and that kind of thing to work it. So, start start at that light and work it back down. But um, this is much faster, for sure. He's looking pretty cool. He's looking almost like the red on my shirt. I, I was about to say that. I was like, and it matches your shirt. It does. <laughs> I wonder where I got the idea for the cult scheme from. <laughs> Just imagine if I'd be wearing something tie-dyed. <laughs> no, you don't want to imagine that? That's fair. Yeah. That's totally fair. <laughs> Excellent. You just don't strike me as a tie-dye guy. Maybe no. like black and white tie-dye. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe black and black. Black and black tie-dye. Yeah, tie-dye. <laughs> you always wear tie-dye. Take, take that black fabric, bundle it up with uh, rubber bands, toss it in a pot of black dye. Be perfect. Okay. Nice. Uh, let's get into... Dave Hummel is working on uh, building his last standard space marine drop pod. Drop pods. Oh, drop the pod. so building the last one for a total of 10. 
Wow, that's uh, that's impressive. I I think I've I've painted about seven or eight drop pods in my time. Maybe yeah, probably seven or eight. So yeah, having ten all uh, all done together. Wow. Very nice. That looks super cool. <laughs> Uh, Jeremy Moffat says, Hippie Dave, painting minis all day long, man. Yes. All day that. long. Yep. Man. I'll move to Vermont and just kick back and paint, uh, paint minis. That sounds wonderful. Black is the most forgiving color to prime with? Uh, yeah. Yep. I think so. I would agree. Then uh, why have I been priming with white this whole time? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I guess it's because you had some on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no, no um, I think I didn't know any better. <laughs> it's it's more that um, what, if you prime with black um, when you're painting, um, if you do, if like if you miss if you miss something in the crevices, yeah, it's going to be black, so it's going to be a shadow in there. Whereas if you prime it white and you miss something in the crevices, it's going to be white and stare. Like stare out at you and say, "Hey, you paint me." <laughs> so from that that point of view, it's uh, it's more forgiving for sure. Gotcha. So, hmm. actually, I'm gonna reach down into my. There we go. And you get some of that rin flesh that I mentioned earlier from Private Day Press. Whoop. And mix that in to the uh, the blood red, bloody red, for some of these highlights. Just so I'm not going too sort of orangey yellow. I'm gonna leave the orangey yellow for Gretchen. <laughs> James was saying he primes with dark gray. Dark gray, yep. I think um, I I'm going to suggest that black is probably the most common, most popular. Um, gray is definitely uh, one that a lot of people uh, use as well. Because it's, uh, it's easier to get lighter color, to put lighter colors down over a gray than it is a black, kind of. Hopefully that would be fairly obvious, but uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely good. You add, but at the same time, you still don't have to do a lot of work to for shading other colors down. And I think for um, it gives the best sort of immediate visual contrast. So if you look at a model that's paint, sprayed white, a model that's sprayed gray, and a model that's sprayed black you'll be able to pick out the most detail from the, the gray. Oh. Something about just the way the light works, I think. Yeah, like some like the way the light is hitting it. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense, because there's more shadow. It's the middle, so you can yeah. get light and dark shadow instead of just one or the other. Yeah. Exactly. You get a better balance of them. So, yep. I think this is looking pretty cool. David Moffat says, I don't think there's one color I prime with more than any other. That's good. There was one point where I knew that, <laughs> like, I would prime 16 times as much with black than white. Wow. Yep. That was mainly because I didn't, I was lazy and didn't throw out my cans when I finished them. So oh it was my like, gosh. <laughs> no, just kidding. I you actually have them stacked. <laughs> yeah. Built a wall out of them. It was great. But no, actually, I went through and, and counted. I thought it'd be a very interesting uh, experiment. But, uh, yeah, so for every every one can of white primer, I'd go through uh, 16 cans of black primer. Okay. You see how that's starting to look on the 
Some thighs there. And with these, I'm just hitting the where the highlight point on the thigh would be, but in along the lines of the sort of the musculature that's there. I think it's going to look all right. But yeah. <laughs> Corey says most of the minis I paint are Reaper, and due to it, many a primer fail, either getting sticky or the details get a bit muddled, I just stop priming them. I'm a horrible painter. This guy, there are actually a lot of people who don't spray prime their minis; they just go straight into painting them. Yeah. And I think if you're if you're not going to be handling them a lot, if you're not going to be using like if they're going to sit on the shelf, that that's absolutely fine. Or if they're going to um, be used infrequently and that's fine the, the main thing that primer does is is helps that help helps the paint stick to the mini or have a surface that's that's going to grip to the mini a little bit better and yeah so it looks like the conversation's going towards priming and all sorts of all sorts of things priming byron's uh uh saying the humidity affects primer it does indeed David Moffat uses airbrush to prime everything. He's got a bucket of color primers to play with. David, do you have some of the um, the Badger uh, Style and Res uh, primers? Use those quite a bit for um, painting terrain with airbrush, which is pretty good. Uh, Sean's been using the Gracier contrast primer, which is very smooth. Yep, definitely the Gracier and the uh, Wraithbone primers are super smooth. When they're um, once they're on the mini, they look great. But uh, is now the time when we should be looking at some minis from the group? Now that we've been talking about it, I think yeah. Yeah, we should do that. We'll see how these. Uh, let's see if we can guess the primer color. <laughs> That's a fun game. I think we should. <laughs> let's do that. You get extra points if it's correct. Right. <laughs> what do the points mean, Leona? The, well, the points mean your mini painting level, of course. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Andrew Avalos uh, painted up his, uh, posted up his uh, Fallout minis uh, completed. They look, uh, look very cool. They look great. Yeah. I'm loving the green skin on the that super mutant there on the left hand side. It's looking very cool, and the uh, kind of the the ragged wrappings around its legs. <laughs> it's very nice, and uh, the guy in the power armor from the is it the Steel Brotherhood. Let's see me. You're asking me stretching. questions. I don't know the answers to. <laughs> really, this is a video game thing. I don't Surely play you know video, video game things. I don't, but I don't. Uh, I'm kind of learning the Fallout ones. But I am loving the guy on the on the right there too. Brotherhood of Steel, excellent. What did I say? Something close. Yeah. Steel Brotherhood, probably, maybe. Yeah, you you said Steel Brotherhood of Brothers. I don't know something close. Yes. Yeah, steel steel brotherhood, brotherhood of Bones. I don't know. Steel Brotherhood of Bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But these are all looking very cool. Nice work, Andrew. They look great. Oh, Ash and Leaf paint works. The heraldry, heraldry for the, of Astartes. Of the Astartes. Yep. The, the Adeptus Astartes, Astartes, the Space Marines. Hospitalias? Yes. Yep. Or oh, Hospitalers. 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 Yep. These are uh, looking very cool. This is a, the classic kind of um, sort of uh, Crusader cross. Mm-hmm. Very, um, very... That's what you'd expect. Nice strong expect. red on the silvery white. Yep. Yep. But, uh, yeah, lots of... How many times have they painted that? Three times on the mini? Oh, it's wow. It's pretty impressive to, to go and do that. It's a lot of thin thin lines to lay those out and then painting to fill those in. Um, the uh, I did see that the um, the poster... It's on the base there. It was uh, printed out. I can't remember who, where they got it from. I did I did read this uh, post though. But yeah, I think it looks very cool. I like the connection of the red, on bringing that red through to the base. 
Definitely um, draws your eye to it. Yeah. But yeah, very nice, um, <laughs> very nice uh, work there, National Leaf Paintworks. So just quickly, I'm going to jump back into the, the chat for a second. Josh Potter says, why no brotherhood of cream cheese or brotherhood of warm knit hats? <laughs> I suspect that that would occur. They're, they're probably out there. They just haven't been found by anybody yet. <laughs> they're hiding. But, uh, oh, Dave Hummel asked if that was a, uh, if Ashen Paintworks was on a uh, first-gen plastic marine. Uh, that would have been... Uh, I think from the second edition box set, 40K box set. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, yeah, definitely looking good. So uh, Ashlyn uh, has painted up Milius Power. It's looking quite cool. Is Which this a- she said was like from a, a show or something like that? A show? From, uh, an anime? I assume Perhaps? so. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, that must have would have, yes. It was a very long title, so yes. Okay. I'm sure it was an anime. <laughs> I couldn't fit it in the, the text. Right. I'm, I, I'm really enjoying the, uh, the color scheme here, the choices, uh, the, the red, the pink, which is just sort of sits adjacent to, to red on the color wheel, just a little in towards, the, in towards the center, out towards the edge, depends on how you... Structure your color wheel, but uh, looking very oh, good. David and then that says that's the kids' logic female power armor from Robotech. There we go, excellent! Hooray! Thank you. Um, but yeah, I am loving the that kind of that glossy look as well to the red. It's looking great with that uh, balanced against that neutral gray. It's framing everything there, and then that little tiny pop of yellow. On top there. Yep, looking great, Ashlyn. Nice work. Oh, Chris Cox. Doing an acrobat. How to use a monk with no fur and a cavalier. Paladin. I think uh, Chris. I think Chris was working through um, painting these up for his uh, gaming party. Is that right? Yes, I believe. Pretty sure. So. Yeah. Okay, so and it I sounds like he hand. Um, painted the emblem on the shield. Oh, very cool. Yep. Particularly on, uh, particularly on small small shields like that, it can be really tough to, to get in and paint those, uh, paint those little sigils. But yeah, looking, uh, looking good. I'm liking that green on the, uh, the acrobats staff there. Yeah. But yeah. Looking good, Chris. Nice work. <laughs> <laughs> he makes me think of Bill Nye. Pardon? The bow tie makes me think of Bill Nye. Bill Nye. <laughs> there's, a, there's something that was a little bit uh, kind of Michael Douglas falling down yeah. about him as well. I think if it had been like black pants and a white shirt, would definitely have, definitely have felt like that. But yeah, this is looking very cool, Chris. Nice work. We talked about it before. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Can we get back to Chris at that for a sec? We talked about it before. Um, Chris uses uh, usually does a lot of uh, neutral or sort of desaturated colors and then something to pop. Um, I think the red here is the, the saturated color. But yeah, looking very cool. I love that uh, the colors you've used for the hair as well, Chris. Very nice. Great. Oh, Chris Hood. Uh, Angela? Is it really just Angela? Or is it Angel? From Marvel, Don't know. Marvel Crisis Protocol. I, I'm pretty. I'm, I think it's Angela. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the with the character, but um, I think Chris has done a great great job here. Obviously, the purple against the gold. Is always going to be a winner. Yeah, Angela. Yep. It is Angela. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the purple against the gold is uh, is fantastic, and I love that the so the purple is quite saturated, the gold is quite saturated, uh, but the way Chris has done the uh, the concrete base there is really desaturated, so it's 
give me that nice sort of pop, that balance against it. I think it's a really good choice for the, those bases for the, for the Marvel Crisis Protocol, mainly because all of your superheroes are typically going to be very bright and brash and a lot of saturated colors. As they should be. Hmm? Said as they should be. As they should be, exactly, exactly. But no, it looks, uh, it looks great, Chris. Nice work. Oh, David Moffat has painted up a Lord of Contagion from the Dark Imperium box. This is very cool as well. I think I asked uh, Dave about this on the group. Um, in the on the axe there, that has the the three spinny blades at the top. So not only is it a big axe that will cleave you in half because of the blade, there are extra blades for continuing to chew through. It doesn't go all the way through with the first swing. Those blades will chew through the rest of it. So, um, but on there you can see little uh, sort of rusted pock marks that are oozing. Oh no. Yeah. So that's uh, a technical paint called Nurgle's Rot from uh, Games Workshop. And uh, yeah, it's got that lovely sort of pussy, glossy kind of look. But yeah, I think David's done a great, great job here. Really nice and dirty and rusty and, and very cool. And I love the, um, sort of the blue smoke for the it's sort of pouring out of those sensors around him. But yeah, David Moss has got to have more blades on your blades. Just in case Yo, you dog, like I heard you like blades. <laughs> but yeah, nice work, Dave. Very cool. Oh, Jason uh, painted up the Bones White Plastic Cassandra of the Blade. Speaking of blades, <laughs> it's all about the blades tonight. But yeah, really uh, liking this one as well. Um, did we not show this one last week? Oh, did we? I think we did. Yeah. It's like, I remember talking about it rather, mo rather than chatting about it. But, um... Sorry. But no, I, I do, I do really, still really, I still really like it. It's very cool. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> you are. Aren't we all? Wait, you had a mind? <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Oh, Was that company issued? I don't think so. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> of course he did. Uh, but no, I think it uh, this looks very cool. The, um, I just love the yellow the, w the yellow work there and also the work on the armor plates. But yeah, nice work again, Jason. Very cool. Ooh. Jody's working on a multiple work in progress pieces. Been definitely cool. I'm... It, Favorite mini there on the table is the uh, the green, the sort of baby dragon there. No, I think that's probably Gretchen's favorite as well. <laughs> baby animals are very very nice. Yeah. Or you still is there still a little bit of trauma from the green dragon? <laughs> no, last year? no, because I didn't have to paint that. Okay. So I can appreciate it. <laughs> very cool, but I'm also liking the um, I'm guess gonna guess it's a wizard there on the left hand side towards the back behind the archer that has his hands out and the, and the wave of fire of on the top. Is that fire? Is it, I'm not sure if it's fire or if it's uh, like playing cards. It's got a little bit of a gambit kind of feel. Yeah. Whatever is floating above his head. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm liking the, the tonal contrast across the model. So where, um, so the, the light face, the darker hair, the, that little pop of dark from the dark blue from across the shoulders there down onto the yellow and then down onto the darker pants and, and that sort of thing so really nice work there Jody enjoying that uh, that tonal contrast good one Josh Potter Thunderbolt Mountain Rail Path of Legacy Sir K looking very cool those um, that would have taken a little bit of time to paint all of those um Keys. I think the keys are um, molded onto the. Are they molded onto the surcoat and the the shield, Josh? But uh, you've picked them out really neatly. So I think that would have been uh, a little bit nerve wracking to go back and do those because of the the really nice blend you've got on the the blue of the shield. There. Just knowing that if you messed up a little bit, you'd have to go back and repaint the whole shield. 
Yep, yes, sculpted on. No pressure. <laughs> David Moffat was saying about uh, Jason's mini, it was so good we needed it two weeks in a row. <laughs> Definitely cool. That's the last thing you can uh, Cool. Oh, Gory is Jason K. Posted a black dragon last week. Had a similar dwarf in blue two weeks ago. Oh, no. Am I, I must be going mad then. <laughs> I must be going mad. <laughs> but nice work anyway. Good one, Jason. Oh, check that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't know if you wanted so he's, to uh, um, talk to us. He's getting fiery. Yeah. Um, getting that nice. So everywhere where his muscles would be rippling is where I'm having the hottest point of the flames. So right. it kind of looks like it's coming from within. Cool. And then that's going down his back a little bit. So you can see how the highlights uh, kind of get a little less uh, aggressive. Sure. Um, because he's not quite working those muscles as much. And then I'm gonna go back through and not quite stipple it as much as I did before, because I liked what it looked like before I added more. And then where it gets flatter, take your advice and kind of do little brush strokes. Yep. And then I'll probably, like where he's uh, on the front, um, instead of really having it come through, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna do as much detail because I don't want it to fight for. Sure. Uh, yep. Attention, but I think I'm gonna do little dots of like embers coming off of these on his lats. Oh, nice. Because I think that'll yep. look nice, and I'll probably do like his mouth. I'll probably do this kind of gradient on the inside. Yeah, I think so. I think that'll um, be good because you want to have that. You want to have that um, contrast to balance. Yeah, against, and so. then do a little bit, not quite the same amount as on his shoulders, but a little bit down on his uh, on his legs and maybe on his um, maybe on his hooves um, but we'll see we'll see how this keeps going so far it looks <laughs> nice it kind of looks better on camera than real life because it really picks up the contrast <laughs> um, I've now swapped from it looking better in person <laughs> right uh, no, it'll, it doesn't go, look it'll bad go back all, and though. forth it'll go yeah. back and forth I'm sure um, but yeah, that is, that is the idea. That I'm going to figure out how to make this work. That's going to happen. <laughs> um, you can do it. I believe in me. Yep. It looks really cool. It, it does like look very fiery. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's looking good. Very nice. Sean also says it's looking good. Excellent. I care about his opinion more. Well, I was going to say, it's not just us. We're paid to like, be nice. <laughs> You're paid to tell me I'm doing a good job. <laughs> but seriously, though, it is looking cool. It is looking cool. Um. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's about getting, with this one, it's about getting the contrast right. And I like the idea that because it is hunched over like that, that it's going to be sort of shaded underneath or darker underneath which is going to really just pop the rest of it. It's going to be good. I think it's funny. I have to do those actions all the time. You have to. Yeah. We were talking before, and I, I was talking to the owner about some alien stuff from Aliens. I talked about the, the power loader, yeah. but I couldn't just say power loader. I was like, the power loader. <laughs> just in case she didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I once forgot the word for blow dryer, and I, I could not for the life of me, like it just wasn't coming into my brain. And I was trying to ask my roommate at the time if I could borrow hers, and she's like, what are you trying to communicate to me? Like, what are you, and I'm like, you know, the thing, the <laughs> That's what I did, I was like <laughs> And she was like, what? And I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Look on, it deep get any easier. into my eyes and just understand me. <laughs> Wet hair drying thing. <laughs> was really hoping for rainbow horns, but that might be a better look. <laughs> I, mean, I still haven't decided on horns, you know. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see. It might work. <laughs> they're, they're not decided yet. It's fine. I think this uh, 
just using this rin flesh, it, it still keeps the the mini looking quite red there. And if I sort of went a little bit too far, if I use some um, ivory there, which is obviously a lot lighter. If I was to paint this on, I say if I was, and here's me doing it, painting it on. Now that I'm painting this on, um, if I felt that this was too too bright, I can always come back with a like a thin glaze of um, the blood red. I'm always just in awe how much, like how quickly. Hmm? Like I mean, I'm experimenting, yep. so like yep. yes, but like also. <laughs> yep. So you could get that. It does look a little bit bright now, so yeah. I probably will come back with the glaze so I can uh, show you how to do that. There we go. Now we know I shouldn't have done it in the first place because it's going to take me more time. Oh well. And then the next thing I'm going to do after that is um, jump into all of this little the scars and details that he's got. It looks like he's got a sort of chunk of skin pulled away there. Um, on his chest, it looks like something has bitten him. I don't know what I don't know what would try and bite a demon. Hellhound. Yeah, maybe, maybe. What if it's just another demon? <laughs> Possibly. That bit yeah. him. This guy. That's that what it's earned. That's yeah. what he's I, I guess it's, a, it's also possible that it was a bite from like when when this guy was a smaller demon, yeah. or was like human before it became a demon. That's the way it works, right? I don't know the rules. I'm just making them up anyway. So, so I'm gonna paint. In Jason some... has a fun question. What have been your most outrageous paint schemes? Um, Dave, what's the tackiest thing I've painted? <laughs> <laughs> tackiest thing that you've painted? What's the most outrageous thing I've painted? Um, I don't know. I always like to think it's the next thing. The next thing is going to be the most <laughs> outrageous. Uh, I'm not sure. I liked your rainbow fish dragon. That's, yeah, that's a yeah. good one. I don't know one. if it's outrageous, um, but it was really fun. The rainbow fish dragon was good. Yeah. I painted a, a, a dragon with the rainbow fish color scheme, and it actually turned out really, really well. Um, just spot on. I did it like a, um, I tried to, I did it with the contrast paints, but I, intentionally used more paint and splattered stuff on it so where it looked more like watercolor because Rainbow Fish was originally painted in watercolor. Um, and it turned out surprisingly well. I think I also really liked my uh, Galaxy Dragon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think yep. that one turned out really well. Um, yeah, but... that was good for sure. I just, I like to experiment and have fun um, with them. I don't, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Dave's like, we got tried and true right here, we're good. <laughs> yep. That uh, sounds whimsical. Mm, boo hiss. <laughs> I've, I think for me it would probably yeah. be the, um, the Quetzalcoatl from um, Mythic Americas. Yeah, yeah. We painted, um, when did we paint that? Uh, end of last year? Yeah. Yep, in December. Right over here, Uh, yeah, actually. Should we bring, can we bring that in? And again, really because it's much more whimsical than, in, than I'm used to. Nope. Whee! I'm still not sure if I like the, uh, like the green goatee and the, and the eyebrows. But uh, that was fun. Was that two? Was that one session or two sessions? That was two. Two sessions. It was yeah. two Get weeks that, that yeah. we painted those. Okay. Cool. I feel like I had never seen you use those colors before, so that was cool. <laughs> yeah, well at least not all on the same model, right? That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've used yellow before. 
And purple and blue. But like yeah. the green, the lime green. No. Yeah, maybe, maybe that. I, maybe I haven't. Because that's like Panzer. Uh, possibly. Possibly use it. But uh, yeah, and then this was the uh, the Wendigo that Gretchen painted at the same same time. I actually like how he dried. He turned out pretty good. Yeah. It's got a very great, a very cool, um, something that Christian went along and did put is some pearlescent, sort of dry brush some pearlescent paint across the the upper surfaces. To that give was it a my bit attempt a, at moonlight. Um, yeah, it's like a yeah, sparkling in the moonlight kind of. Uh, <laughs> it kind of looks a little bit like frost, but that's fine. Yeah. I think it's absolutely fine. Definitely. So that was cool. So it's kind of funny that that, that that sh those two shows where you painted something where the the rest of the color scheme not not including the the pearlescent which I wouldn't have done but the rest of the color scheme was something more like I, something I would have done and then I was there <laughs> painting rainbow yeah. rainbow feather wings we swapped so that's probably mine but yeah this one will be less outrageous but it's funny that we're both using reds Okay. Now I mentioned doing a um, a glaze over the the legs there. It's definitely something to um, sort of keep up your sleeve. Um, never fear if you do go. You have that feeling that you've gone too far with your highlighting. Uh, I'm just going to take. Okay. Content with going too far. I'm going to just kind of take it a little bit higher on that leg. And I'm actually gonna start hitting some of those scars with it as well. Yep, that's finally showing up on the on the camera. There's some great scars across his leg there. And here too. Now I will admit I don't actually sort of use this approach a lot. Um, mainly because I'm pretty conservative with my uh, my high highlights. I don't take them up very high very often. But now I use it to my advantage. Painting a little bit of that um, the ivory into those wounds. So I don't want to have them bleeding. I just want to have them looking like. Sort of just yucky wounded. flesh underneath, <laughs> underneath the um Oh goodbye James. James. Oh bye James. <laughs> With her these models, yes, these models were primed in black. Yep. There we go. The uh, Corax black. Chaos. Chaos. Chaos, black. excuse me. Yep. Thank you. Corax no black. Chaos Corax black. black. Chaos Corax. Yep. This is fine. There we go. You're starting to see those that scarring on the on the chest there and on the leg. Very nice. Right, well, and oh, just a little bit more there. This is the the bit here where it looks like he's been bitten. And on the on his hand here. Just in the, the webbing, sort of between the thumb and forefinger, there's a looks like some sort of ritual scarification. So I'm just gonna go in there and highlight that up first. And the reason I'm taking these up a little bit higher than I probably usually would is um, is that I know I'm gonna come back with the with the glaze, so I don't want to lose. Um, sort of the smaller amounts of highlighting. One of the things I just did then, I realized I should probably explain that, is I put some of the, the paint on the knuckle and it was a little bit too much, so I just wiped some of it off. Which, just doing that with my finger, pushing down around the, the paint, gives it a little bit of a feathered look around the edges. Then I have to remember not to stick that, that finger back on the, the mini. So I've done on those knuckles as well. Just wipe a little bit. So 
So there we go. Time for glazing, do you think? Uh, sure. A little bit of, oh, almost. A couple more pieces of scarring, a little bit long there. Pick up some of these on the back. I know there's another piece that I'm missing. There it is. On this hand, the back of this hand has got, got some scarring as well. Get those in place. Oh. Okay. Uh. All right, okay. Dave Motley was asking if the models were primed in black because they were looking very dark green on his monitor. Oh, um, so that's A little weird. bit of calibration or... Um, yeah, no, that happens though with black. It can look green. Yeah, and I think particularly with... Um, it has ha orange background. Like the fact that we have this like orange background and yeah. that you both are using red tones. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be impacting that for sure. And I mean, actually looking at it on the monitor here, uh, yeah, Gretchen's... Is looking a little bit. Um, yeah, Gretchen's sort of camera for some reason just is a little yellow. Um, right. Okay. On the actual like calibration of it. Yeah. So. Okay. That is why. So there we go. I've got those. Those highlights. They're a little bit uh, over the top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take some of the um, gory red. This is kind of my mid-tone, is the gory red. Um, and really thin this down. I don't want to get, um, you can see that sort of thinning out there on my on the palette. I don't want to get any of the ivory or the, the flesh colors mixed into it. So I've got to keep it separate over here. So it's nice and thin. And I'm just going to paint it over, paint over on this leg first. So you can see that starts to knock that, knock those highlights back a bit, and give that slightly sort of pinkish tinge to the um, to that scarring. Looks a little bit glossy at the moment, but once it dries, you'll be able to see how that's um, knocked those highlights back. But that's uh, that's really what the glazing process is. Is working from your um, kind of your mid tone, and as you you highlight up um, any areas where you're a little bit too, you think the contrast is too extreme or too immediate, um, you can put a quick glaze over it, go back, um, work on your highlights again. So I'm just going to hit the chest as well there. One of those. There we go. So make sure I hit all those those areas like the knuckles <laughs> as well. Trying to where I painted all of the scars. Oh good. <laughs> Christian's blends are fire. <laughs> I try. They are actual fire. <laughs> Definitely good. Um, I'm really excited to start getting that black stippled on there and see how this really comes out because I think it's going to look really cool. It already looks really cool. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Looks really hot. Hot. So hot. I used the color shifter um, violet old copper. Okay over it as kind of like a little bit of a glaze. I kind of like the violet in there as a shimmer because it almost gives the effect that it's uh, heating up to almost a blue flame, yeah. okay. um, which I really like. But 
all of the black and everything else is going to be matte. It's not going to have any shimmer or anything at all to it. So hopefully it uh, gives a really nice juxtaposition to that. Yep. Yeah. That's the, uh, the finish the, contrast. Yeah. yeah. What were the colors that you used for the, the flames? The colors for the flames, I used scarlet, I used orange fire, I used flat red and I used ice yellow with a tiny bit of sand yellow. So these are my fire colors. <laughs> <laughs> the colors of flame. Um, One of the things I like use about using using the sand yellow in there is that it's got um, has better sort of coverage. Then, it um, does. <laughs> then there's like a, a plain yellow, like a sun yellow or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the ice yellow um, did not always end up as opaque as I wanted. So yeah. uh, the sand yellow definitely did a good job at uh, yeah. kind of compensating for that because I really want it in all the little crevices so that the lifted parts get the bits of black. Uh, the name of the clear coat, so it's not a clear coat. It was the Violet Old Copper in the Vallejo Shifters line. Um, it's very, all the shifters have a very nice kind of like gloss to them and they typically work better on black because um, then you can see the shift in the colors. But yeah. on light colors like this, it just kind of adds a, you can see it if I rock it that kind of sheen to it. And the sheen just has the slightest bit of purple. The copper kind of blends in. Um, but I wanted everything to stay wet looking or lava-y. As close to lava-y. Is, is lava <laughs> technically wet? It's liquid rock. It is, li it is liquid rock. I'm not sure how glossy it is. But it's again, like it's the. Glowy it, fire. I don't know if it's wet because it burns. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not water wet. But it's, uh, and it is. We're a, asking the hard question. It, it is a liquid, but I, I think this this is absolutely fine in this situation because, when we said before, it's that contrast you're going for, not just the tonal contrast between the bright yellow and the black, um, but that finish contrast. Yes, because I want the black. Just having the to, finish contrast will help. I want the black to dry almost soot like. Yeah. Um, yep. So. So I think that's that's where you can push it and, and make it look wet, even though it might not in real life be wet. It's just because your eye is seeing a contrast, it will uh, enhance that. Uh, we I had a question it. earlier. Is there an Ooh. alternative to glaze to get the same effect? Um, for those of us with limited paint types? Uh, just really thin, the... Thin down your own paints? Yeah, just thin down your own paints. Um, that's uh, so. What I was doing there is I was, I was thinning down gory, uh, gory red, which is the um, kind of the mid tone. I'm oh, sorry, throw it under there. So that's this one, this one in the center. So I started with the dark, with the charred brown, overbrushed that, overbrushed the gory red, then dry brushed the blood red, mixed in some colors to the blood red and the gory red to, for the highlights, and then just came back with the thinned down gory red. It's really all glazing is because you're you're trying to tie two colors to two different layers back together. So the um, using the the gory red as a thin glaze is um, is the way to go. I know you can buy sort of different. Uh, there are some paint ranges that have glazes in them, um, but this the glazes and uh, the glazing approach. Is more just like that. It's it's thinning down the um, the main paint color that you're using, or the the mid tone paint color. Uh, you could also thin it down with some medium um, as well, give you a little bit of a different result. But uh, yeah, I just thin it down with water. Just the way to go. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> cool. And as um, Josh says, uh, you can glaze by adding water, but you don't. Ha uh, you have to be careful that you don't break the paint down too far. You get Liquitex or Golden Brand glazing medium or acrylic medium can help. Exactly. Because what paint is is it's 
little tiny flecks of pigment, uh, pigment suspended in uh, in a medium, and water dilutes that, and putting more medium into it also dilutes it, but it doesn't. Um, they have different kind of flow properties, just ways that they move over there. Pardon? Properties. Viscosity. Viscosity. Uh, they do have it. Yeah, they do have a different. They have a different viscosity as well, but the way that they um, the way they hold the pigment is a little bit different. You're more likely to get an even spread through a medium uh, than you are through water. And technically, water is a medium as well, but uh, an right. acrylic medium is the kind of more official term. But um, yeah, with water, it's going your pigment is more likely to sort of pull into little clumps. So that's what Josh means by when he talks about gotcha, um, gotcha. Break, breaking the paint down too much. But yeah, you can just get it with uh, with thinning down the. Oh yeah. The regular paints. He had said he wasn't sure if it was a specific type that you were using. Oh okay. Since yep. there's so many, you know, contrast base <laughs> color shift. There are a lot. There are a lot. <laughs> But uh, Luckily, yeah. Dave is a simple man. Huh? I meant you water down your paints. Like you just, <laughs> you're not about. I don't know. You're not about like using ten different versions of the same thing when you can just easily. Are you saying I'm not fancy? Yes, but in a good way. You're you're right. I'm not fancy. <laughs> plain, plain Dave. That's me. I think it's one of those things where when I'm painting, I like to paint a lot of miniatures. Yeah. So um, it's all about, it's so experimenting, as Gretchen enjoys doing, um, isn't something that I do a lot. Usually with a, a paint job or an army, I'll, I'll pick one thing that I haven't done before and try that out. But everything else will be tried and true, kind of yeah. tested recipes. So that does sometimes mean that uh, I'm very, very, very slow on the uptake for for things that uh, the Gretchen's like. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and use this here. Da, da, da. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could have that whimsy, that enthusiasm. No, and no inhibitions. I'm just gonna slap yeah. some paint and see what happens. <laughs> um, exactly. Hopefully, something cool. So, I have just noticed as well that Baphomet here has um, fingernails. What color should the fingernails be? Hot pink. Hot pink? Purple. Yeah. Purple. Uh, I'm not sure whether I should do them. So black? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I should do them black because I think I'm like most of the, f the fur is going to remain black. Gotcha. So I'm wondering if I should do like a dirty, dirty brown, crusty. Oh, that would be good. Yucky. That'd yeah, be good. Yeah, tan. Yeah. By the Tron says tan. Okay, let me have a quick. Let's uh, look at our la last few oh, minis. Oh, second batch of minis? Yes, let's definitely do that. Okay. Oh, Michael Bull, young bronze dragon. Ooh. I'm always a fan of bronze dragons that have a patina. Right. I love that color combination. Yep. <laughs> like, I mean, like, <laughs> cool, like, metal things aside, like, oh, it's young, like, an older one would be very patinaed and blah, blah, blah. Like, yep. I just, I feel like the copper and the turquoise is just an awesome color combo. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, Michael's applied it really well here. It's got that sort of growing in from the edges kind of thing, which looks uh, looks really cool. Looks very nice. But I, I've, I've got to say, Michael, I think um, the basing is uh, inspired. <laughs> very, very rarely see um, wa like water kind of approach on a base, and I think you've done a great job over there. It's got that f the foamy ripples. Yeah, I like that. It's really foamy effective. Waves in. It's not like too fancy, but it's super effective. Yeah, it is. And that's yep. what I like about it. Yeah, done a really nice job there, Michael. Great work. Mike has painted up uh, this, Ooh. well, it, was it Demon Night tonight? 
And of this awesome uh, Reaper Bones demon, looking very cool. Might have to steal some of these uh, these cues. I think it's got a great um, kind of uh, crocodile slash dragon tail yeah. to it. Yeah. Looking very ne uh, very neat down down the back there. But no, I think you've done a great job here, Mike. We've got that um, lava base kind of thing going on too. So excellent connection to what we're painting tonight. That was lucky. Was that serendipity, right? Yeah. It was very lucky. I did not <laughs> <plan> that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, no, definitely cool. Looking really nice, Mike. I love the uh, the flame in his hands as well. Done an excellent job. Very cool. Okay, Mike. Ooh, Baba going. Yaga's hut. Mike was in the. I think Mike was in the chat earlier. He's still here. He's still watching us, Mike. At Baba Yaga's hut. I love oh, those chicken the bones. It is pretty cool, isn't it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what the like the first time that the the legend of or well, the myth of Baba Yaga was told, <laughs> and somebody decided, I know what's going to make this really cool, chicken really legs. Really terrifying. <laughs> have you legs. ever have you ever had a chicken like come after you before with its spur, like a, like a rooster, like? Sure. Yeah. 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 Yep. But, when, uh. to, but to then to then say, now imagine a chicken, but like twelve foot tall. 12 foot, 12, like 12 foot long legs with a house on top. Uh, but regardless, I think um, Mike's done a great job here. The coloration on the uh, the chicken legs is really nice. What I really like is the bones. Um, it looks like wood, but actually on a different picture, it looks like bone. Oh, right, um, yep. On the trimming of the house. The kind of, uh, they're almost, they've got a bit of that bone shape, the, the long, long bone, mm -hmm. sort of uh, like femurs. But yeah, they're definitely, definitely looking cool. Nice work all around, Mike. Paul Wardle. Krugman. What a good dwarf. Krugman Axhelm. <laughs> there is that wonderful convention for naming, it, it, naming dwarves. I had to name a Wookiee once in Wookiee language, and I could not for the life of me pronounce what I had chosen, but it looked <laughs> like Roy G. Biv. Right. Which is why I chose it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, wow. oh, so we just called her Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Rainbow. Excellent. But I think Paul's done a great, uh, great job here. I think I really love the uh, the beard. Is that wonderful focal point of any? The highlights really on the braid. Yeah. Are just very, very precise. Yep. You can see the clumps of those hair yep. without it looking stringy. Yeah. Exactly. No, I think uh, that's a, it's one of the, the best parts about it. Nice work there, Paul. Done a great job on Krugmer Axelm. Roger Moore painted up Hercules. And I think it was, was it last? Yeah, it was last week we were talking about the different colors that we could use for um, for it. And Oh, actually, no. Um, I think Roger asked me about it in, in the group. And I threw him out a whole bunch of colors. And he goes, I don't have any of those. <laughs> and I said, what do you have? No, but uh, we threw, we threw around like, some I other colors. I have charred brown. <laughs> have like, charred perfect. brown. How can I make this from charred brown? It's like, <laughs> yeah, done. Here's, here's how you do it. But no, um, but th thankfully he had uh, a, a quite a few different uh, GW colors. And GW has, has got a great range of different um, desaturated tans. Oh, okay. There's like, they've got like four or five of them. It's amazing. They've got like two reds, but like 17 desaturated tans. Um, but no, I think uh, he's put this together and done a really nice job. They have their priorities. Straight. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, one of the other things I love about it is the, um, is it, so we've got that desaturated tan, that it's almost a desaturated orange for the, the lion's pelt. And then around the, uh, just underneath the belt, they've got that blue sash. Um, that Roger's done. Very nice job. It looks super cool. Nice work, Roger. I'm looking forward to seeing the next one. I'm not sure what's next. We've had Ramses, Hercules, and who do we have first? Hmm. I can't remember. I can't remember. It was a. It was um. No, forgotten that. <laughs> was it an Asian? Um. I think myth? it might have been. Yep. 
And I believe it was. It was a Chinese warrior. Okay. Cool. But yeah, looking very cool. Uh, moving on to Sean's uh, Storm, uh, A Storm Wall Walks Again. So this is from uh, War Machine from the Signar faction. Um, looking very cool. And I wonder, Sean, if you're still in the chat, were you inspired by Gretchen's lightning bolts? <laughs> but that, uh, that lightning across the, the carapace there looks very cool. It does look very good. Yeah. And I love the, um, the blend as well on the, that uh, logo, the, the icon on the front. That bird uh, looks very nice. And, use, yeah, using that, um, that sort of bronzy brass. I look for a lot of the metal. Again, just bounces really nicely against the blue. But yeah, looks very cool. Nice work all around, Sean. Swan, thank you. That's, the, that's what the bird is. It's a swan. <laughs> Real quick, I just want to uh, shout out Slices and Dices. Thanks for joining us. Oh, fantastic. First time live watcher. Woo. Finished my uh, entire Zombicide Black Plague zombie set. Oh, very cool. Super cool. So I have to play with a whole fully painted set. That would be very impressive. But yeah, thumbs up for that, for sure. That looks great. But nice work, Sean. Hang on. Oh, another fantastic one. This is by uh, Sleepwalk Air. Kraken Eater for Age of that Sigma. is fantastic. So this is a... Um, so Mantic Games have um, a giant. This is obviously a huge giant here. And I think it has... It can be made like three or four different ways, or you can buy sort of resin accessory pieces to go with it. Um, but yeah, this kind of really awesome deep sea monstrosity blended with a giant is uh, is just super cool. I love that enormous head and all the eyes on the side of it. Just that kind of great mutated feel. But yeah, the coloration is fantastic. I love the the fades, that uh, blue and the gray into the kind of the bone kind of look, and even on the the back of the legs. So the front of the legs are pale, the back of the legs are dark. With that. Um, do you think you could guess the scale, or do you know the scale? Um, of so, yeah, that's um, probably about. Or what's that going to be? It's maybe about ten inches tall, ten or twelve. It's a big, big boy, for sure. It's huge. But yeah, using it as a Kraken Eater for uh, the Age of Sigma Sons of Behemoth army, which is all giants. Oh, wow. Yeah. You have Mega, you have mega Gargants and the Kraken Eaters and the, is that? No, Ale Guzzler Gargants and Mega Gargants are the two giant sizes. But yeah, beautiful work. Love it. Ooh, some miniatures for the little library that I use far more than I should. In their D&D &D campaigns. Yep. Everyone's always coming back to the library. People like to hang out and read. <laughs> and also There's, get eaten. <laughs> and get eaten by the by mimics. Mantic. <laughs> I mean, but, um, yeah. You know what I'm mimics? Trying to say. I'm yeah. pretty sure this is by Mantic Games. It's their terrain. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is, definitely. Um, so last year for, uh, for uh, Free RPG Day... Yes. Um, myself and uh, Jeff Hall teamed up with Mantic and um, the Army Painter, and we put together a booklet on how to paint these ar this ar this library set. Um, I think I haven't sent it off to them, but I'm going to send it off to Mantic and the Army Painter, and they're going to be able to put those that booklet, the, or at least the PDF of that booklet, on their uh, on their websites. Um, and when I do that, I'll link awesome. it in the in the group. But um, yeah, some miniatures here has done a, a fantastic, um, fantastic job of painting these up. It looks very cool, and, and I love that you can, they're just the right size. You can stack them. You can have a huge wall of books and other sort of paraphernalia. But I think my favorite thing, and particularly in this, the way that this picture is framed or the, uh, like arranged, is that um, comfy red chair. <laughs> it's got a, a feel of like slightly warm velvet. The comfy velvet. chair. The comfy the chair. The chair is the mimic. Yeah. Hmm? They said the chair is the mimic. The chair is the mimic, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. It's got that feeling of like a very worn, um, 
velvet chair. It yeah. reminds me of the Blue's Clues chair, and it's like, come sit on me, please. Yep, yeah, come sit on this me. This is safe. And, then, oh, and we'll eat you. Mm. But now, beautiful work there, some miniatures. Looks great. Oh, Stephen Hurdle. One one hundredth scale pilot from a mobile suit Gundam. Now that's tiny, that's 15 millimeter scale. Yeah. Pardon me. So about half the size of, um, of a 28 mil mini. Wow. So, yeah, half the, half the height of one of these. Ooh. Nice and small, looks great. Um, so you've done a great job there. Good work. And then you're gonna pop it in. <laughs> Table Flip Studios. First up, great name. Love it. Uh, <laughs> and he's from an RPG game called, uh, called Tecamel. Oh. It does look very cool. I wonder if this would, this would fit in nicely probably with um, Mythic Americas. Yeah. But uh, I am loving the, I mean, the, the flesh work, every, all the work that you've done on the, the chest and the abs and the shoulders there is looking great. But I'm really loving the, um, the work on the, the skirt. But, um, I'm guessing the texture is already there, but then picking out that, that very vibrant green and the desaturated uh, orange is almost, like, almost yellow, is looking really cool. Very nice work. Okay. <laughs> David Moffat says, Oh, nice. 15 mil pilot. I just happen to be working on some 15 millimeter tanks. Surprisingly. <laughs> that is about as surprising as me using Chad Brown. Not surprising at all, Dave. It looks good. And uh, Jason said, uh, needs Conan the librarian. That's actually what I called the librarian at my high school. Oh. She was a she was an angry lady. That's sad. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. But we still spend a lot of time in the library, as you do when you're a nerd. But, uh, yeah, they all look fantastic. Thank you very much to everybody who submitted... Uh, pictures or posted their pictures in the group and um, thank you to Leona for going through and cherry picking a bunch they look, uh, look super cool I am nice, everyone. so glad that I get two days on this yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I do very much like how it's coming out like it's it, it's very uh, he has highlights now also real quick I just want to say hi to Gary in the chat Oh, thanks for joining. Hey, Gary. <laughs> We're painting um, monsters. Did you make it? We are painting monsters. Mine is Baphomet from Gale Force Nine. And uh, mine Christmas. is Garistro. Garistro from Wizkids. Very cool. So we'll be painting these guys again, or oh, finishing them off next week. Yeah. Yep. I think that'll be good. I always want to talk about me now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to add, like, I'm trying to add little sparks. Um, so he's nice and highlighted a little bit. Very matte compared to everything else. And then on his lats, can you, you can't really see it. Um, but I can, and I know that I'm putting the effort to have little tiny flyaway sparks of, of fire. <laughs> embers, that's the word, embers. That's what yep. those are, um, a la what you'd see at a campfire. So I'm gonna have a few little dots coming this way and probably this way, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Um, and uh, next time I'll start working on like the other details, like his face and these lovely iron bits here that I'll probably make red hot at the top and then cool down to match the rest of them down here. Cool. <laughs> Garistro's Bistro. <laughs> the restaurant in a trendy part of town. It does, it doesn't, he doesn't sound like a, like a super like, he looks kind of angry, but he does sound like it's like a bistro or something. <gasps> oh no. You know which part of town it is? What part of town? Flavor Town. <laughs> that's that's Guy Fieri. 
got the flames. Oh my god. Like he's, he's wearing a flaming shirt. He's got to do some blonde hair at the front. Just, just there. right, just, just right a little there. Blonde the, the little beard, the Frosted little tips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't have said that, but I had to. Okay. Apparently, Gary is painting, or I need to paint my 20 millimeter for bolt action. Cool. And Slices and Dices just painted the Baphomet a couple months ago. Oh, cool. Excellent. What, uh, what scheme did you go with for that Slices and Dices? You need to let us know. Because the original is actually like black skin. Oh, okay. Or and what, I what say color is the... the um, paint like scheme the, on the box. The box art. The studio, studio paint job. What's the, what color is the, the fur on the box art? Leona didn't tell me she still had the box. Okay. So I've gone with that. Probably, if, uh, let me see if I can find a spot where you can see the, the fingernails there. So I've gone with some beige brown and some ivory on there. I think I'm going to pick out the edges with the with some well, ivory. I wanted you to be creative. <laughs> Expand your horizons. <laughs> um, no, so he has black fur and then he has uh, brown skin. Okay. And then yep. the um, what's it called? Markings are almost like highlighted in okay. a brighter red. Okay, cool. That's good. So not not too different to what I'm going to end up with, except red. Okay, so I've just um, hit the edges of the, the his fingernails with um, with the ivory. I think to really push home the dirty grottiness. <laughs> I'm going to. Where is it? Can I put it in here? Mm. Is it it? Yes. Some Agrax Earth Shade. There we go. Whee. So it's a nice dark brown wash. Give it a really sort of dirty kind of feel, particularly to in around the uh, in around the cuticles, because they do look uh, they look cracked. I'm guessing he doesn't have um, doesn't have time for Manny Petty. Coming along. I thought that was very funny. It was. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just focusing so hard that, on little. That you thought it was funny, is funny. <laughs> I thought it was silly. I guess it could be both funny and silly. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna throw a little bit of the charred brown onto the uh, his hooves. Oops. Mess around with an idea, work out what I'm going to do on the base. I pointed out earlier that it's kind of interesting that he has this big sort of skid mark there where he's dragged his foot across or he's just come running in and, well, I didn't suggest that. I, it was the I owner. said he was yep, making correction. an entrance. Making an entrance, yeah. So he slid right across this uh, flagstone floor and dug up the... Uh, the stones, so it's kind of interesting. I'll work out how I how I'll paint that next week. And what? Uh, oh, what do we got? Um, cool. When uh, oh sorry, Gary said he needs to paint his twenty mil for bolt action. The bolt action game. Gary says, um, 
Oh, David Moffat says, what, what 20 mil did you pick up, Gary? I'm wondering if, um, if when Gary says 20 mil, he's talking about the, uh, the weapon, <laughs> the, the big heavy machine gun. <laughs> it's like 20 mil, it's like three quarters of an inch. Um, there's one of them appears in uh, Saving Private Ryan, I think, sort of right mm -hmm. towards the end in the, in the big fight at the end. But uh, but twenty millimeter is also essentially the same size as one seventy second scale, so sometimes it can get a bit confusing there. <laughs> Josh Pono says, "Ladies and gentlemen, just giving a round of applause to our favorite little helper, Agrax Earthshade, for sure." But uh, Ooh, Slices and Dices said they painted it close to the box art with uh, black fur, dark brown skin. Piling up to a medium brown, uh, well, with the scars and demonic red. But they love the red scheme as well. I think so. I'm, I don't think I'll go too too bright on these hooves. Hooves, hoofs, hooves with the V. I believe it's hooves. Okay. It's hooves. But no one says it that way. Well, I know that it. I know that it would behoove me <laughs> to get it right. Sorry, Sunky. To say hooves correctly. <laughs> yes. Behoove me to have the correct pronunciation. But maybe it behooves you. <laughs> no. Okay. It doesn't. Fell <laughs> flat. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to live in a world where it would behoof me. I'm not saying I feel strongly about it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Right. So I can't say dwarves? See, I say dwarves with a V. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I do not say dwarfs. Oh my god, and Tolkien intended. Okay. <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I was actually gonna like take it more down the path of like um if I was from Michigan and talking about my rough. Oh, no. That's how they pronounce it, right? I, I could be wrong. Don't know. It's been a while. But, okay. I think I'm going to tackle the fur first thing. I'm going to mess around. I got to get some, get a base layer down on these, his weapon. That'll be the thing, the last thing I do tonight. Well, on the show. Last thing I do on the show tonight. <laughs> It'll just cease all action at the end of. Put you back in your yep. cubby where you belong. Yep. Wheel me out next week, flick the switch. Wait, where I belong? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You didn't think I was going to pick up on that, did you? Nope. <laughs> there we go. I am just a painting robot. We keep you around anyway. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Rather consigning me to the scrap heap. <laughs> All the paintings of yesteryear. Yep. There we go. So, just painting some tinny tin. Surprise, surprise. There's the base color. I'm gonna do this little band here, gold. I think because I want to throw some purple in the on the base. So I think it'd be nice to have that working as well. There we go. So 
So uh, Gretchen, tell us what you're doing to kind of wrap up the... Uh, to kind of wrap up before I have to leave you guys and my mini. Um, so I painted his eyes because um, I just wanted to get that done um, and out of the way. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. So oh, cool. his eyes are also <laughs> very flamey. Um, so I did red and then I did a smaller um, thing of orange and then I did yellow and then his eyes are actually the only thing that I brought the contrast up to white with. Okay. Um, because I want them to look really, really glowy and to kind of bring the attention, because everything on the front is gonna be a little bit less um, extreme, <laughs> extreme than the back. I, w I still wanted to have a place of focus, but I didn't want, because the inside of his mouth is also going to be embers, I didn't want the inside of the mouth to completely draw away from his eyes because I feel like eyes make things scary. Um, so their contrast goes up to white, nothing else will, and then I went back with black and did the inside under that brow ridge to make them even more contrasted and kind of deep set. Um, so that's about all I'm gonna get done today, but that's okay. Next time I'll probably go through and add a little bit more of the gradient of those embers to his forearms, but just a teeny tiny bit, and then do his face, and then do these nice little metal bits here and have them in varying uh, stages of hot red poker iron and normal iron, and figure out what I wanna do for his horns. Maybe y'all can help me. That's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow horns. That's all you're gonna get next week. That's all I'm gonna get. Rainbow horns, rainbow horns. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking how this experiment turned out. I think it turned out really great. And I'm glad it did. Yep. Yep. Not like my green dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't break anything this time. <laughs> I mean, we have three minutes left, but you know. <laughs> I think you're, you're coasting towards no breakage. Yeah, so I'll get it. Good. Just don't, yeah. I don't touch anything. I won't, yeah. You should yeah. be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> be good. Excellent. What about you, Dave? Uh, I'm, now I'm just going back and um, painting the, uh, the fur black in preparation for, for next week, where I'm going to mess around with some, um, I was going to use coal black. I oh. talked about that, and I thought maybe I should use something different. So I'm going to use deep Inspire. sea blue. I'm going to use deep sea blue, which is the same, it, almost the same color. But I just haven't used it before. I think that'll look really good because it'll low key contrast even more with the red. Yep. Yep. I just want that. Uh, yeah, definitely that low key kind of kind of feel. Um, and I think one of the things as well that I'm going to do is so for the for the skin, the highlights were done by mixing in ivory. Mm -hmm. For the fingernails, the highlights were done by mixing in ivory. <laughs> and for the fur, the final highlights will be done by mixing in... Ivory? Ivory. Amazing. Yeah. It'll, so, it'll look, it'll blend. I think it just gives that, um, it, it's one of the, it's a cool thing to do across a model is use a similar color for, mm -hmm. to, to mix in to create the highlights. So they don't have to all go all the way to that final highlight color, but... Um, Like some oh master series, what are you talking about? Uh, the Reaper Master Series, Cold Black. It's definitely it's totally not twenty three. What is it? Is it is it much more like a like sooty black? I think it's more sooty black. It um, could be. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to uh, tackle this. Woohoo! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll have the enthusiasm for you, Dave. It's I fun. appreciate it. Thank it's you. Good. Keep it in my pocket. Save That's it for good. a rainy day. <laughs> <Save> <laughs> well, we'll see if it uh, snows this weekend. Oh, it's Fingers supposed crossed. to do that? Yeah. Delightful. Sunday. Ooh. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Ooh. Or maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Blah. Not about that. No? Okay. <laughs> I don't want it to snow. I don't like snow. No? Nope. Okay. I don't mind it, uh, like, 
once or twice a season. I don't mind it if I can stay inside. Okay, that's fair. Um, but when you have to get up and go to work? Yeah, don't that like that. Terrible. Mm -mm. like to stay warm. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that brings us that on that weather note. <laughs> on the weather note. Okay, sorry. Yes. <laughs> and now the weather. Um, but on that note, uh, yeah, that's all for this evening. Make sure that if you're not on Painting Happy Little Minnie's Facebook page, you go ahead now and you click no, right join. Now. Yeah, literally right now, because you're probably on a computer. And mm. Uh, make sure you join. Leona will let you in. Um, and we will finish these guys up next time Ooh. on Painting Happy Little Minis. And we'll, yeah, do you have something else to say? Your eyebrows oh, went Oh, yeah, up. no, real but, quick. I just want to say something, Gretchen. Yes. Um, if you're not on Facebook, you can still upload pictures. Um, there's a link in the Twitch where you can download, I mean, upload a Goog to Google Forms. That's my Twitch. And it's also on YouTube. <laughs> Cool. Yes. So a link in the Twitch and a link on the YouTube video as well. Awesome. We're expanding. Cool. We are. We're getting stronger. Conquering. Conquering. But yeah. So we've got no. What I was going to say when I raised my eyebrows before you said. Uh, so yeah, come and join us here on Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh -huh. Late Late Show. <laughs> so what you can do, the way you can do it, is, is at the end you go join us on Painting Happy Little hey, Minis, and I'll throw in Late Late Show. I like it. Cool. Right. We finally Done. we're working towards it. We're working yeah, it out. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna we're, we'll get a groove, Dave. It's we been will. two years, but one day we will hit that groove of intros <laughs> and outros. I was gonna say we'll probably hit the groove as soon as we change like time slot format <laughs> again in two years' time. Uh, you know, uh, we'll do it. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time, and we'll see you at your friendly local game store.